Joining me today is a YouTuber, a fearless defender of free speech, and someone people have very strong opinions about. It even says that in her Twitter bio. Blair White, welcome to The Rubin Report. Thank you for having me. You know, when there's this whole LGBTQ thing and we did the gay rights thing for a couple of years and gay people got equality, uh, which is the whole point. We're supposed to have equal opportunity, okay? I'm sorry, Dave. But we don't. There are still a lot of states where gay people don't have the same protections as everyone else. Uh, so I'm definitely against children transitioning. I think that it's a horrible uh, <laughs> decision to let a child make a life-changing decision and decide to be sterile, because that is a consequence of transitioning so young you can't mm -hmm. have kids. This is something that I pretty much agree with Blair on. I think it's a bad idea to let children decide that they're a different gender. I remember when I was really little, I wanted to be Smurfette. I wanted to be Miss Piggy. I wanted to be a number of female characters. I wanted to be Olivia Newton-John, you know? Luckily, I didn't have parents that coddled that sort of thing. If I had, I might have made a decision that I would regret for my whole life. Um. And just the drugs that they go on, there's a lot of problematic things that go along with that. Um, there's a show called I Am Jazz. Mm -hmm. It's on, I think, TLC or something. And um, it's about a 16-year-old trans girl. And she had been transitioning since she was probably like five. Not medically. Medically around like 11 or 12. So she was put on puberty blockers, which is what you go on before hormones. It basically, she never went through testosterone or male puberty. And because of that, um, it's kind of gnarly, but her genitals like never really developed. Mm -hmm. And so she can't even have the surgery to like become, you know, a woman and have a vagina because she was on puberty blockers. And puberty blockers are hailed as like the most important thing to go on. Yeah, wait, can you explain that a little further? Because I, okay. I think that goes over a lot of people's heads. Like she actually needs to undergo the proper surgery at the end, so to speak. She actually needs fully formed genitals, yeah. right? Yeah, um, the amount Male of- Male genitals. Yeah. It's so gnarly and it's, it's like really graphic, but the amount of depth that you can have in the vagina is directly related to how long the penis is. So if you are on puberty blockers from the time you're 11 years old, you never develop, you basically have a micro penis yeah. and you can never turn it into a vagina. It's just too small. I just think that's so insane, isn't it? Again, I am agreeing with Blair on this. That I used to live in West Hollywood, which is basically the gayest place on earth. There are rainbow gayest. crosswalks, truly. I mean, it is the gayest place. And that the community is sort of succumb to groupthink. Even when, when gay people weren't treated equally, there was a very cool rebel streak. I think Milo actually makes this point really well. There was like this sort of subversive, it's like, like cool, yeah. And I think they've tr traded it, I suppose, for equality, which is of course which is is great. important under the law, but it's- It loses a little. Again, we haven't traded it for that. Again, there are still many states where gay people can be fired, can be kicked out of their apartments, can have a whole bunch of things happen to them just for being gay, and they don't get the same protections that everyone else has. I've never felt at home in that community or the LGBT community. I've been to a million gay and trans and lesbian functions, I've always felt like the black sheep. And I've unfortunately also felt the same way at a lot of the events. As I've said before, you ask the wrong questions and suddenly everyone turns on you. I would have a huge problem living in any Islamic country. Um, Is there one you could openly, the way you would want to live that you know of? There's about 40 or so. Um, I don't think being trans because um, even uh, Dubai, like that's supposed to be like the, the liberal haven. Where in the world did you get the idea that Dubai would be the liberal place? Is it because they just have a lot of money and have lots of tall buildings and people go there to vacation because of all the expensive things. Um, places you'd want to go would be like Tunisia, Morocco, Turkey, places like that. Uh, places where Sharia law isn't the law of the Muslim world. And even there, there's a lot of problems. Um, there's a YouTuber uh, named Gigi Gorgeous who like 
was stopped at the airport, couldn't even enter the country, was like detained. So it's like, well, you can't go to Dubai, like where can you go? Certainly not Saudi Arabia. It only takes a tiny, tiny bit of research to find out what places are more liberal. Wasn't there even a straight, a heterosexual couple that was kissing on the beach in Dubai and got arrested? I really? Mean, yeah, so it's not quite, yeah, yeah it's, okay. got, there are other problems too. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. Disappointed in you, Dave, you could have corrected her on what places are a little more liberal. Or maybe you don't know that either, and you're just kind of going with the standard narrative. Clearly, yeah, clearly. For the liberal haven. Like yeah, that. clearly. So, um, but even more so than like religion, I, I focus on culture, mm -hmm. and I would never want that culture to become something that's super prominent here. The likeliness of that kind of culture becoming prominent here is almost zero. Already, the 0.9% of the population of this country that are Muslim, there is a tiny, tiny percentage out of that 0.9% that might want to live that way, but they have, they have no political clout, they have no power, and they don't really have any influence. Mm -hmm. because that wouldn't be in my best interest, you know what I mean? Or anyone's best interest, women's best interest, men's best interest. A lot of people, a lot of people talk about women in, in the Muslim world as, as, you know, as victims, which they are. You know, I get a lot of just insane messages from women and LGBT people in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. But I also get a lot from men who feel like um, they're trapped as well. Everyone's in a very strict um, role there. Yeah. So um, it would be in no one's best interest for that to be here. Maybe you could show where we're somehow at risk of that. Yeah, so what makes the left go so defensive on Islam and so offensive on Christianity? Because they're brown, they think they're brown. No, it's because Christians and Dominionists and Reconstructionists have power. Right now they have the highest positions of power in our government. That's something to be significantly more concerned about than people that make up a small percentage within a 0.9% of the population. They think. They think. Because there are plenty of white Muslims too. There's plenty, plenty of white of brown Muslims. brown Christians. Absolutely. So that's a huge misconception on the left's where I think they fight so hard because, which is why they call, you know, people who voice concerns about Islam racist because they associate that with brown people. And, um... No, that part of it is because they've redefined the word racism to mean privilege plus power, and it's idiotic. Apparently, if you're brown, you have to have all these, you know, 20-year-old white saviors jumping to your, <laughs> your rescue. If you could only have more purple-haired girls at colleges defending right. you, then everything would be okay. Right, right. It's because they're brown, honestly. It's, it's really that simple, I think. Blair, you claimed earlier in the video, in a section that was really long and drawn out that I didn't include in this video, you were saying earlier that your big thing is to watch the opposition, to watch people's videos and look at content and read the news from the perspectives that are not your own. You would know that they have redefined the word racism if you were paying attention, but apparently you're not. Which then, as I've said many times, is the actual definition of prejudice. Absolutely. Because you're prejudging people based on their color. Absolutely, because you think of, uh, you know, when it comes to Christianity, like the slightest problems with Christianity, which there are some, but not really that many anymore. Oh, you're so naive. Oh my goodness, you're so naive. Especially with some of the shit that Trump has been pushing in his administration. And how he thinks that religious people should have special rights, but not really Muslims, but, but just Christians. Christians should have special rights to discriminate uh, that other people don't have the right. Um, they'll jump on that, like, the, like the, the, the gay cake situations all the time that pop up sometimes. You know, that'll be like the end of the world. I guess you just don't understand the ramifications for that case, okay? If that's allowed, then other religious businesses will be allowed to do the same thing and it will be able to be expanded. You just don't seem to realize the precedence that that case has. Yeah, where, that, where were you on the gay cake thing, by the way? Just as a sidebar. Um, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. It was the <laughs> stupidest thing in the world. Whenever that pops up, it's like, but what I didn't like is that um, these small shop owners just get their lives ruined over it. And it's just like media attention to the extreme and like their shops get shut down and they lose their livelihoods. That's horrible. I do think that's a shame, but maybe they should have followed the law. 
Um, but ugh, another one of those like petty disputes, I just, I can't care about that too much, you know? Again, the precedence that this sets is not petty. This has far reaching ramifications, but you don't want to pay attention to that. You'd rather focus on a tiny percentage of what's already a tiny percentage of the population push forth that we should be worried about Muslims. Do you have a, all right, I, I think it's staying. Uh, do you have a favorite <laughs> subscriber and would you ever consider doing a collab video with them? Favorite subscriber? A favorite subscriber. I think someone's trying to hint something to you. Right. Um, probably just all my Patreon supporters because obviously they go the hardest, you know, and they're the greatest. So essentially, you just admitted that you're in it for the money. Yeah. Are, are you pretty much in lockstep with Jordan Peterson on the on the pronoun stuff? Like, right there. He's not against trans. I've never heard him say one anti-trans no, person thing. Just don't tell me what I have to say, and certainly don't make it a law. Absolutely. He's tweeted me and very, been very kind to me. He's not a hater of trans people. He just doesn't want to be told what to say, which is like the bare minimum in life. Like, don't tell me what to say. <laughs> and I pretty much agree with that as well. Uh, do you feel that having so many different labels in the transgender community helps or hinders the idea of gender diversity? For example, does it open the doors to free sexuality or does it create more barriers? What do they mean by so many different labels in the transgender community? Are there, are there labels that I, I may be missing within the community itself? I think so because they, they do like the non-binary thing and the, like the agender thing and there's just a lot of different terms floating around. Um, and it creates barriers for sure. I mean, that's just kind of how the human mind works. We categorize people and we find our tribe, and you start splitting the tribe even smaller, it's like, then it's just a bunch of people who are in their own little bubbles. You know, it does create division. It doesn't bring people together. Again, I agree. I don't have anything to counter that. Yeah. Oh. Do you think it also just causes exhaustion? I talked a little mm -hmm. bit about this with Lacey Green, that when you get something to the point where you have to label every little person's feelings about every little thing it this only way, that way. only divides so much. That, that I think of the average person is just like, fuck this. Like, I don't need to, I'm not even going to talk about this. Exactly. Precisely. Right. what's the point? Right. Like, you and I's audience, like, we're very involved in all these conversations. But when it comes to real people, like, you can't just walk to 7-Eleven and start talking about non-binary and shit. Like, it doesn't compute. It's not real life. That yeah, goes yeah. back to me saying I don't appreciate being, like, expected to suspend my belief of how the real world works. So yeah. it's like, it's almost tiring talking about it. I know I keep displaying over and over where I'm agreeing, but there's really not that much disagreeable about this interview. The right should make more social media outlets rather than also always relying on Twitter and stuff. Silicon Valley has like a stranglehold on all of that. So I think it's important to start diversifying that for sure. Here's the problem with that. So much of the right wing is unwilling to talk about messages of acceptance. Unless it's messages of acceptance of Christianity. That's a problem. The type of people who do get seen on social media are people like... God, what the hell is his name? Josh Farnstein. Fearnstein. You know, people like that. People who make bigoted statements. Those are the ones who get seen. Those are the ones who have any sort of uh, following in right-wing circles on social media. So, until there are more prominent figures that are promoting acceptance and tolerance, we're not gonna see that. Yeah, it definitely does. Are you uh, enthused, though, at least how many libertarians or classical liberals, whatever it is, are on YouTube? Because you see all these, these people, young people get on YouTube, they start earning money, they start realizing what they want involved in their life or not. And I see so many of them actually shifting mm -hmm. to libertarianism because of that. So that's at least in, in, enthusing, rather yeah. than just, we may not have enough artists yet. Yeah, when it comes to YouTube actually, um, libertarians and right-wing people and Republicans actually have a monopoly on YouTube. It's kind of crazy. Like if you look at um, leftist channels, they don't do as well and they get yeah. a lot of dislikes. You're right, unfortunately. And Dave just admitted just a moment ago that classical liberalism and libertarianism are very, very close to each other. All right, later. Decent interview. I recommend watching the whole thing.